Hey, Steve. You know what we never tried? What? Walking on water. Walking on water? Yeah, Jesus had the Holy Spirit and so did we. We should try it. Let's do I it. I bet you won't. Zach, bet. Zach, let's go. Oh! oh. I made all my the other side. <laughs> Did I do it? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that is what faith is all about. Oh. Yeah, yeah, faith, faith. <laughs> you messed me up. This is the armor of God right here, the breastplate of righteousness. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh! Hey! Oh! Whoa! Yes, sir! <laughs> Colton is the winner! Yay! How did you guys think we did? Did you guys walk on water? I think Zach actually got the farthest. I think for a brief moment, I felt like I was just weightless. I sunk right away. I guess I liked it. You gotta know. listen to Steve's sermons more. Yeah. Because you're on your phone when he's preaching. I guess on that note, Steve's got a message right now. So tune in and enjoy this message. Pour it! Get that out of here! Get that out of here! No bad thoughts over here. Yeah! What's up, JHM? Pastor Steve here. So excited to be back with you all, and I'm really excited that tonight we are back in person. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be a great night, but maybe you're here and you're watching online because you weren't able to join in person. Man, we're so glad that you still were able to join us online. We love you and we miss you. Today, I wanna spend the next few moments talking about birthdays. You might be thinking, whoa there, Steve, slow down. Zach, four for four, he talked about emotions. Katie talked about Job. Kristen talked about cancel culture. And Buff Zach talked about light and dark. And here you are talking about birthdays. Really? Really? No, but seriously, who here loves birthdays? If you do, why don't you put, give a shout out or put an amen in the chat? Amen. I love birthdays and I love them for a whole lot of reasons. I love that I get to celebrate with loved ones, with my parents, with my siblings, with family and friends. I love getting to have cake. I mean, Funfetti cake is the best thing ever. If you don't like Funfetti, you're weird. And then getting to open presents, the best. When you get that gift you've been wanting for so long, AirPods maybe, new iPhone, maybe it was a new video game, or better yet, money from grandma, the best. I love birthdays so much. I'll let you in on a secret. I'm that guy that calculates how many hours I have left in the day, hoping that somehow God was gonna perform this miracle or he performs this miracle and adds hours to that day so my birthday could be longer than 24 hours and it would never end. Anybody else like me? At the beginning of this pandemic that we know is COVID-19, it was Jessica's nephew's birthday. And it wasn't just any birthday for him, it was Mateo's first birthday birthday. However, because of COVID, no one can be there to celebrate the little guy. Sad. And so at Mateo's birthday, it was myself, Jessica, her sister, brother-in-law, and the baby. And since no one could be there in person, we had to get really creative. And so we had everyone join us online. And throughout the party, we had FaceTime call one after the other. We had all these devices going off, a group of people uh, hanging out on Google Hangout. And so everyone could be there to wish him a happy birthday and celebrate Mateo. We eat dinner. I had in and out We all had in and out while Mateo had apples. Uh, I know, how mean are we? We eat cake, the best kind of cake, like I told you. Funfetti, but better yet, from nothing but cakes. Ooh! And then it came time for the best part of the birthday, gift time. Time to open gifts. So Mateo, he's seated in his seat. Remember, he just turned one. Jessica straps him into his seat and he's getting ready to open up his gift. Phones are everywhere with people waiting eagerly to see his reaction to the presents that they bought him. He grabs the first gift. He puts his fingers in the wrapping paper. He's attempting to rip it off. And he's doing this for a solid 10 seconds as we're watching this. And then all we see is this. And his head turns and we're all thinking, what is this man looking at? We quickly find out that in front of him at the table was an iPad 
with not people on it, but with Elmo. And in this moment, people didn't matter, the gifts didn't matter, all that mattered was that he was able to watch Elmo. <laughs> because he loves Elmo so much. Instead of opening the gifts, he chose to watch Elmo. Isn't that crazy? I figured he didn't want his gifts, so I decided to take him home and save up for a down payment on a house. No, I'm kidding. However, I can't help but to think that this happens more to us than we would like to admit. And not the Elmo part. <laughs> but we get so distracted with our thoughts that we don't enjoy what's in front of us and we could fall into this trap of toxic thinking. People who are way smarter than me, scholars, say that we have anywhere between 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, that is a whole lot of thoughts. And although that number is huge, I would venture to say that majority of those thoughts come in and out of our brains really quick, but some of them, they stick. And we think about them for hours, days, weeks, months, and years. I mean, how true is it that one bad thought can ruin our entire day, yet throughout the day, so many amazing things could happen, yet we still focus on the one bad thing. For example, someone could say something mean that hurts our feelings. And then right after that, we could win $50,000, meet David Dobrik, and get to see all of our friends, yet that one mean comment that that person made is the thing that sticks. It doesn't mean we don't love everything else, of course we do, but our minds go straight to remembering that mean comment that was said about us. And I think oftentimes, we can be like Mateo without even realizing it. We're so distracted and we're so focused on those negative, those toxic, those defeating thoughts that we have every day. I know it's true for me. In fact, about a month ago, I had worked all day. I got the privilege of speaking in the main to some of your guys' parents. And then I hopped on a Zoom call with all of our junior high leaders. It was about a 13 hour day and I was so tired. All I was looking forward to, if I'm honest, was getting home, laying in my bed and falling asleep with my head on the pillow. And so I get home, I brush my teeth, I get ready for bed, and then I go and lay down. I'm laying down, my eyes are closed, I am ready for bed, my body is so tired. An hour in, I'm wide awake. Two hours in, I'm tossing and turning. Three hours in, the same thing. And that whole night, guys, I literally got one hour of sleep. One hour of sleep the entire night. Some of you guys, you do that because you're playing video games and all that during the summer. For me, I actually wanted to sleep and I got one hour. My brain was going all night. It felt like a hamster on a hamster wheel with all these different thoughts running through my brain and maybe you've been there before. And maybe your thoughts didn't keep you up all night, but maybe they may have left you feeling like your brain was on overload with all these thoughts coming in and out. Thoughts like, I'm not good enough. I haven't seen my friends in so long, I wonder if they still like me. Is this the new normal that we're in? Because I don't like this one bit. I feel like my life is on pause. I just wanna be in school. I wanna be able to see my friends in the hallway and have classes with them. Man, I just wanna play sports again. I hate this school online thing. I just wanna be back in person and get ready to see my friends. But let me be clear, not every thought that we have are negative. Not all our thoughts are toxic or defeating, however, a study that was done showed that 70% of our thoughts, 70% are negative. That means for every 10 thoughts that we have, three are positive, encouraging, and truthful, while seven are negative and toxic, which is why we need to be careful with the thoughts that you and I have. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 10 verse five tells us that we need to take our thoughts captive. Meaning this, we need to monitor the thoughts that we have going through our brains, making sure the ones that don't belong on our minds aren't taking up space. And the idea of taking our thoughts captive might be really hard to understand. For me, I grew up in church and I really never understood it. And so today, I wanna to illustrate it to you with this bowl of candy. Here in this bowl, we have a bunch of Sour Patch Kids. This candy represents the thoughts that we have going in and out of our mind every day. And if you notice in here, we have some chocolates mixed in with these Sour Patch Kids. The chocolates, these right here, they represent the negative, the toxic thoughts that we have, while the Sour Patch Kids represent the good, the, the uplifting thoughts that we have. And so what happens is when we take our thoughts captive, when we monitor the thoughts like the Bible tells us to, we're able to scan all these 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts that we have a day. And we're like, you know what? This doesn't belong here. I'm actually gonna excel this year. I'm not a failure. I'm not ugly. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not a loser. 
God thinks I have value and I have value because of what he says about me. And what happens is those negative thoughts that we have, we take captive. We take them out by giving them over to God, by taking them out of our mind so they don't take up rent space in our brains. And all these positive thoughts that we have continue to be here. But that only happens if you and I monitor them. And what happens when we monitor them is we say, you know what, God, this doesn't belong here. I'm going to give this to you. And we're going to make better decisions. We're going to be a lot happier because what we believe determines how we behave. And that's our bottom line for today. What we believe determines how we behave. But what's awesome is that you and I, we have a tool. We have instructions on how we can test the thoughts that we have going on in our minds. This way we can keep our minds right and we get rid of those negative, those toxic, those defeating thoughts. In fact, in Philippians 4, verse eight through nine, it says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, notice this, think about such things. Think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Guys, the guy who penned these very words is writing this while he's in jail. And jails during this time were small, dark rooms, and sometimes they were underground. They were not places people were like, hey, sign me up, that sounds good, I wanna go to jail. No! And here we have Paul, who I imagine to be lonely in his cell with all the time in the world to think. And he writes these words, and I'm gonna read it again. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. You see, when we read it again, knowing the context, it makes that much more sense. And what Paul is saying is, hey you, yeah you, watch your thoughts closely because they can and they will affect your everyday life. In these verses, he's not only telling us what it is that we need to think about. Although he tells us that, but he also gives you and I instructions on how we can test our thoughts and how we can get rid of those that don't belong there. And what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves the things that he writes. We need to ask ourselves, is it true? Is what I'm thinking noble? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is it excellent or praiseworthy? You see, if our thoughts don't fit any of these things, we need to get them out. They don't belong there. They cannot take up real estate in our brains, which leads us to our first truth. Whatever you chew on, you're going to swallow. Whatever you chew on, you're going to swallow. And right here, like I said, there's two types of candy, chocolate and sour candy. The chocolate, like I said, is the negative thoughts, while the sour candy is the good thoughts. And I have two options, not anymore. So whatever it is that I choose from here, I'm gonna swallow. If I choose this, I'm gonna swallow chocolate. If I choose this, I'm gonna swallow something sweet and sour. You see, if we chew on the negative thoughts, like the chocolate, meaning we give our energy to those things, we're gonna risk becoming those negative thoughts, those negative things. You see, if we chew on the name that that person called you, or the thing that that person said about you, you're gonna swallow it and think that's who you are and what you are. And it might not even be true, it most likely isn't true. See, I've seen this happen before. And I don't want you and I to fall into that trap. I want us to be mindful of the thoughts that we're taking in and out of our brains. Because what we believe determines how we behave. Which is why it is crucial that you and I, we check our thoughts. And let me say this. This is for everyone to do daily. No one is exempt from this. Myself, our interns, your life group leaders, we should all be checking and taking inventory of the thoughts that we have going in and out of our minds daily. And some of you might be thinking, Steve, earlier you said that we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Keeping track of all those sounds like a lot of work. Dude, I have trouble keeping track of my backpack or my phone, I lose it. Hey, let me say, I'm the same way as you, I lose my stuff all the time. However, in order for us to do this, it's simple. We need to ask ourselves this. Does what I'm thinking align with what God says? Because if it doesn't, 
then we need to get rid of it. Is what I'm thinking true? If I make that comment, is it gonna honor that person? Is that thought, is it lovely? Is this decision pure? Or is there a different motive behind it? Because if it's not, we need to get rid of it and eat the good. In Proverbs 23, verse seven, it says this, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. I shouldn't have done that, but I'm doing it. Which is why it is so important to take inventory of our thoughts. Which leads me to this question. What are you taking in? What is it that you're taking in? I know this sounds like a weird question, I know. But I want you to track with me. If whatever we chew, we swallow, we need to be careful about the things that we're consuming and that we're taking in because what we take in and consume has an effect on us and our thinking. And so let me ask you this, what are you watching? What are you listening to? Who are you talking to? Who's influencing you or who are you being influenced by? Because we're always being influenced by someone or something. What are you digesting? Because all of that, it bleeds into the thoughts that you and I have. And if we wanna get our minds right, we need to be careful of what we take in. I love what Romans chapter 12, verse one through two says in the message translation. It says this, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, going to work for you at school, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well for maturity in you. Guys, one of the ways we can do this is by giving our thoughts and our actions over to God. And we can do that by screening the thoughts that we have. And what I, that's what I want you to do. My application point, one thing is I want you to screen your thoughts. Screen your thoughts. Pretend with me like you're going through the airport. You're trying to get to your favorite destination. For me, it would be Turks and Caicos. In order to get to the airplane, in order to get to your destination, you have to go through security. And if any of you have been on an airplane before, you have to walk up, you go over to this screening thing, they go like this to you, and then they check to see if you're good to get on the airplane. This is what you and I need to do with our thoughts. We need to be able to screen the thoughts. What is it that we're taking in? What is it that we're listening to? What is it that with the thoughts that we have, are they good for us? Does it align with what God says about us? Is it true about that other person? Is it gonna tear that other person down? Or does it line up with what culture is saying and what Paul is saying, it's just gonna drag you down? And so this week, I want us to screen our thoughts. Think about it, is what you're thinking true? Does it line up with what God says about me and what God says about me? How he wants me to treat others. If not, take it out like the candy that we did earlier with that chocolate and give that thought over to God. This is something I've been doing. Man, I've been trying to watch my thoughts carefully. And what happens is, I could sleep a whole lot better. I don't have a hamster running in my brain on a hamster wheel and I am giving these thoughts over to God and my prayer is that you would do the same and you would experience the same thing because what we believe determines how we behave. That is why, friends, it is so crucial for you and I to watch what's going in and out of our brains, to watch what we're ingesting because ultimately that's what we're gonna digest. Be careful about what you're taking in and watch your thoughts, take inventory of your thoughts because if not, your mind will be a mess just like mine was. But let's go ahead and let's pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for Paul. Thank you for the life that he lived and thank you that he gives us instructions on how it is that we can test our thoughts to make sure they align with what you say. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in each and every single one of our lives. Thank you that we get to meet in person again today. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, JHM, it was so fun getting to hang out with you. We have a great rest of the night planned for you. If you're not able to join us in person, make sure to join us back again here next week. But we love you so much, and we will see you at 7 on Zoom Groups. 
But you guys that are here, you'll be joining life groups just shortly. We love you guys and we'll see you next week.